What's up, folks? Dan here from BeAGameCharacter.com, and welcome to the last Q&A Tuesday ever on this channel. <laughs> Sorry for the clickbait headline and intro, but here's the deal. I am done with my job, my day job, where I work at the fish farm, like I've told you about before. I am done with that tomorrow, all right? That's the last shift that I work there, and then I am going solo. I am, I'm, as you've seen and heard about, if you've been on the channel for any amount of time, I am redevoting myself to be a game character. I'm also opening a gym, um, and I'm going to be doing a whole lot of other stuff to make money on my own, work for myself, live the dream, yada, yada, yada. One of those things is I'm going to be launching my own personal vlog channel. Um, so here's the idea. The idea is basically... I have one vlog channel for just myself, and that is The Best Dan Wallace, and I will link to it at the end. You'll be able to find it, and you can go subscribe there. But The Best Dan Wallace is going to be just about me and my life in general. I'm going to shoot for a daily vlog. It's probably going to be semi-daily. There will probably be days that I don't quite get to a video or that I just didn't do anything worth filming. But for the most part, I'm going to shoot for a daily vlog over there, and that is where Q&A Tuesday is going to be happening in the future because I want to be able to basically um focus down be a game character and unleash the ultramind both of which are coming back into full swing be a game character is going to be focused exclusively on fitness stuff um martial arts stuff and like nerdy gaming stuff so all those kind of in one place um because of that i'm moving q a tuesday to my other channel the best dan wallace because uh I want to be able to also talk about things outside of that scope on my channel, which I think will be cool. And I'm going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. I think you guys are going to really like that channel. I hope you will. If not, you obviously don't have to watch it. You can still just stop in for Q&A Tuesdays over there. But uh, so that, that's that's the idea there. Unleash the Ultramind is going to be focused specifically on development of the mind. There's going to continue to be uh, biographical breakdowns of really smart people uh, like once a week. And then also other stuff um, – stuff about you know how to learn faster how to train your brain properly meditation stuff like that um metacognition <laughs> as story man was talking about last night it was story man right i think wait i have to scroll through now no was it story man was it your name was it story man was it your name uh yes story man i was right the first time <laughs> sorry um so that's the idea. Basically, my channel, The Best Dan Wallace, is going to be just whatever the heck I feel like it. Be a game character, fitness, martial arts, nerdy stuff. Unleash the Ultramind, uh, smart people, being smart yourself. So that's the general idea. I would really appreciate if you go subscribe to The Best Dan Wallace at the end of this video. I'm going to link to it. You'll see it. Um, and I'll make references to it occasionally here on Be a Game Character. Be a Game Character is going to be, I'm thinking about three times a week, but maybe less maybe more depending on what we do um and then all unleash the ultramind is going to start off with just two a week so i'm already putting a lot on my play we're going to see how it goes uh the b game character website is continuing to be twice a week updates which i have not been sticking to last week and this week because i was crunching super super hard for my nasm uh uh, uh, personal trainer certification which i got i was successful yay go me so i'm now officially a certified personal trainer um yeah so that is all of the stuff that we had to talk about let's move on to the questions first off the question of the week was what is your favorite kind of hat my personal favorite hat is a good old irish cap like this um my wife got this one for me it's probably the favorite hat that i own i'm gonna put it on now actually how does it look with the headphones eh, it's all right it's not bad it looks like oh, there we go it's weird seeing it mirror imaged in the camera there we go it looks decent i'll take it all right so moving on we've got storyman09 who says hello dan i prefer dirty hat hating heretic thank you very much it's more alliterative <laughs> seriously though i don't have anything against hats i don't personally wear hats often but if you're asking what my favorite kind of hat is to wear it'd be realistically be either a standard baseball cap a cowboy hat or straw hat or a beanie not sure beanies count though yes beanies count now what are we talking about when it comes to caps versus hats that basically if it goes in your head it's a hat 
that's my official qualifier. My favorite kind of hat in shape and appearance alone would probably be that sort of large, ridiculous, medieval slash pirate kind of hat with a feather. Nice. The feather is a must. I agree. Referring back to last week, metacognition, simply put, is thinking about how you think. Yeah, I looked that up afterwards, and I felt kind of silly for not realizing that. So <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> uh, that's what I was asking about. I know a little bit about the subject, and it just seems like it might be an interesting topic you might have come across with doing Unleash the Ultramind video or something. As for, and that's going to be coming in, as I mentioned, on Unleash the Ultramind. As for this week, my question is, which character was the most difficult to write posts for over on the blog? Um, probably Snake, Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Just because I'm not a big Metal Gear fan. Like, I tried to get into the games, I just couldn't. The storyline's way too convoluted for me. Uh, everybody looks way too similar for me. It's just, it, I don't like Metal Gear that much. Uh, tell me what you want. Tell Say what you want about it. But, you know, I just, mm, I'm not a big Metal Gear fan. So that would probably be the hardest one. Uh, the workout was relatively easy because I just went with, like, a military-inspired kind of thing. But it was just, I just, just, just wasn't all that enjoyable for me. And, and when it's not enjoyable, when not, like, super into the character, it's just hard for me to grind out the post sometimes because I want to be super into it and, like, informed and whatnot about it. But at the same time, it's difficult to be passionate about a character that you're not passionate about. So that happens once in a while. People, if I get enough requests for a character that I don't really care much about, I will cover it just for other people, just for their sake. Like, um, like I'm going to be doing Guts at some point from Berserk. I'm not a big Berserk fan. It's I'm not a fan of the comic. I think it's way too dark for me. I think it's just, uh, uh, eh, you know, whatever. But so Snake's in that category. Um, there's probably a couple others in the blog that I'm not thinking of right now that are also in that category. But basically just somebody I don't really care about. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I'll cover this guy. But it's just, you know, if enough people want to see it, I want to do it. So that's how it goes. Uh, thank you for the great question, Story Man. I don't think I've ever talked about that before. Uh, you have a nice week as well. Next up, we have Benrex777, who says, I've never heard of the word bar stars before, but yes, that's the one. Yeah, bar stars are crazy. What is your favorite kind of hat? I never wear hats at all. The closest thing I wear on my head is the bicycle helmet and the hood of the raincoat. It's not that I, it's not that, like I hate hats. They can look good on other people, but I never get used to wearing a hat myself. I just have to say, you look fancy with the sombrero-like thing over the headphones. The sombre you know what? We're going to go. We're going to do dual hats. Here we go. Ready? Oh yeah, this is this is what you call cultural outreach right here. We are uniting uh, European and Central American cultures here. I think do I have any other hats? I do. I do. Here, how am I going to wear this one? This is I, like I, like I mentioned. I like hats. I've got three in arm's reach here at the computer. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nope, nope. Come back, come back. We're going to go over the top. There we go. This is like this nice wool hat. This is like a, a almost like you'd see on like a, a fishing boat or something like that. So there we go. We've got like. We've got Alaska, we've got uh, uh, Central America, and then we've got uh, uh, Ireland right here. There we go. All right. Looking good. How long can these stay on my head? <laughs> i got to come down so you can see them. Ugh. Uh, now the question for you. Today I saw a man drive by with an electric unicycle. He stumbled over something, and I looked more closely. Then I saw two unicycles when I expected only to be only one. My first thought was that it was a duplication glitch until I realized that it's not even possible. He was carrying the other one before he let go of it. Do you have a story where you mix the gaming way of thinking with reality? Um, it, intentionally or unintentionally? Because intentionally, I like to look at my life like an RPG all the time. Hello, like I wrote RPG fitness, and that's kind of how I live my life. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go level up now. Time to learn something, you know? Um, unintentionally... Yeah, I guess like glitch in the Matrix moments like that where I'm like all of a sudden I feel like I'm like, you know, the, you get those deja vu senses almost and you're like, am I in a simulation right now? And there's a big school of thought on that as well. There's a lot of people out there who have theorized that we might actually be living in a simulation right now, which is a cool theory more than I care to think about because I'm like, if we are in a simulation, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not looking to break out of the Matrix anytime soon. Um, but yeah, I have had those moments where I'm like, oh. Feels like a video game right now. Also, uh, the other thing is when you have, uh, if you've ever had a big adrenaline rush and everything seems to move in slow motion, like once in a while in my life, I have those moments, you know, either when I'm fighting in, you know, uh, uh, karate or judo or uh, in and other sorts of high stakes situations where all of a sudden everything seems to slow down around you. Like, it feels like bullet time for, like, the Max Payne series or something like that. So, it's it's that definitely like that. Very cool. Um, so, those would be my two video game ones. Uh, the, the glitch in the Matrix type moments, like you have, like you were talking about with the unicycles. Or, like, those cool, like, everything slowing down around you moments. 
Great question. Thanks, Benny. Uh, you have a nice week as well. Next up, we have Your Name, who says, Hey, Dan, thanks for answering my Nightwing question. To update you on that, I'm going to document my training over the summer. Awesome! My short-term goals being to bring my bench up to 235, my squat up to 350, and my deadlift up to 375. Solid. My favorite kind of hat is a patty cap because of my Irish heritage. Hey, look at that. <laughs> my question for you is, what new style of fighting do you think will emerge in MMA? I think now we are seeing mostly a mix of Muay Thai, boxing, wrestling, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. However, there are countless more styles of martial arts that could have room in the cage. I would say I, I realize I'm a little biased here, but I feel like karate styles could offer a bit more in the cage. Uh, the issue is karate guys initially got burned against grappling guys and... Uh, you know, and on top of that, karate organizations, for whatever reason, are usually a little more xenophobic than other styles of martial arts. Like, they, a lot of dojos are a little dicey, a little iffy about mixing with other styles. For whatever reason, it's just, it's a very Japanese thing, and it carries over, I think. Um, you know, I mean, if you go into a BJJ school and you're like, hey, I know this cool technique, and I'm going to show it to you, and I want you to come train at my place, most BJJ guys would be like, oh, cool. Let's do it. Whereas, like, in a lot of karate schools, you're like, hey, I'd like to, you know, introduce this other style in our fight. And they're like, no, that's verboten. I don't know why they'd use it in the language besides J Japanese to say that, but, you know, it's verboten. Uh, <laughs> so I think karate has a lot to offer. And if you look at the karate guys, the high-level karate guys who have gotten into MMA, like the really good ones, you've got people like uh, uh, Lyoto Machida. You've got people like uh, uh, GSP. You know, like, you've got very, a lot of very, very high-level technicians, striking technicians in the UFC and other mixed martial arts organizations have a strong karate basis. Um, the issue is just, again, it's a cultural thing, I think. Um, so karate is one of them. The other thing I think you could see a lot more of in MMA is um, actually more European-style martial arts, um various forms of European wrestling. We do have uh, uh, Greek and Roman-based wrestling, which influences American freestyle and other stuff. But there's also, you've got, um, there's Irish wrestling styles, there's Germanic wrestling heritages, there's a lot of ground fighting. Uh, there's even uh, uh, French ground fighting, and I feel like there are other grappling styles that could come in a bit. The issue with grappling, like striking, is that there is... Only so many w ways to do it. Like, you can have one grappling technique in 18 different cultures that developed on its own individually, and it's all the same technique, just by different names, because there's only so many ways you can move the body. So that's part of the issue, that we are moving towards the homogenization of martial arts in MMA. The things that you can do according to the rules. Like, there's a certain limit to body mechanics. And there are occasionally new techniques that come in from time to time, but I think we're slowly reaching that finite point where it just comes down to how well you can execute the things that we already know how to do. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, have a nice week. You have a nice week as well. Also, could you do vid videos on stick fighting? I can't find any stick fighting gyms in my area for my Nightwing goal. I would like to, but I personally also need to learn stick fighting. I've done a little bit, but again, it's just a matter of like, I haven't had time to look into it much. So we had, we had a, a stick fighting specialist come into my dojo a little while ago and work with us, and it was a ton of fun. I really want to learn more, but just did not have the opportunity at the time. Would like to learn more in the future. So when I learn it, I'll bring some of it to you. But until I know it really well, I'm not comfortable, you know, instructing in it. So, yes, we'll get there. Oh, hat down. Yes, we will get there, but unfortunately, it probably won't be today or tomorrow. F FYI, this is a... Chevy's hat that I got for uh, uh, from my friend Steve. It's actually his hat, technically. So if, if you guys know Steve Barnes, he's appeared on the channel once or twice. Steve, I've still got your hat. Uh, moving on to our last question. We have John Smith who says, My favorite hat is my Yushenka. I, I hope I said that right. With genuine USSR emblem and all. Nice. That's pretty authentic. I appreciate that. Did you ever consider taking an angle with RPG? Did you ever consider taking an angle with the RPG fitness? How Derby did with Pandora? I have thought about it. Um, Derby did Pandora. Um, also over on Nerd Fitness, Steve Cam now has uh, paid courses that are very similar to the idea of uh, they're like an RPG thing where you pick classes similar to RPG fitness, but more structured like class environment, whereas mine is more like free study. Um, I have had that thought. I continue to have that thought, but 
probably not going to go that exact route. Just because, first of all, if two other people have already done it, namely Derby and Steve Cam over on Nerd Fitness, I don't necessarily want to be the third person to the party, first of all. Second of all, I have another idea. And uh, that's all I'm going to say for now. Farewell, hat. I knew you well. Um, I'm going to take the top one off. That's what's making it heavy. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh oh, we're entangled. Entangle it, entrapment. Uh, I'm being attacked by a hat. So yes, I have ideas similar, sort of, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, yeah, this is just gonna go over here. Farewell. So that is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this last Q and A Tuesday on Be a Game Character. Tune in next week and go post your questions. I, well, you can post your questions this video, but tune in next week. Subscribe over on uh, The Best Dan Wallace. I'm going to link that right at the end here. You'll be able to see it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put it right up here. All right, we're going to put it there. So uh, tune in next week over there. That's where the next video will go up, and uh, I'll link it on the Facebook and group and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching. As always, remember to live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome. Bye-bye.